Best rapper alive. Tupac. <laughs> He's not alive. You say he lives on. Well, not a lot. Lives. I know. I keep doing <laughs> You said he Listen, West Coast girls think Tupac lives on. I'm with you. I'm with you. So Tupac, keep going. Keep, keep doing that. <laughs> um, who would I say? I mean, there's so many. I mean, you know, it. I. There are some that I I I would not mention right now because they should stay in their lane. What? But um, others I. <laughs> I don't know what that going. means. I want to know who one of those are. Keep moving. Okay, all Keep right. moving, Angela. All right. I didn't. That was not supposed to be a stumper either. What about? Uh -huh. um... <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel... Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Kim, folks and weirdos. What are we talking about today, folks? Man, oh, man. So, Miss Harris made her choice on VP. And now we can talk about it. Now we can have a sigh of relief. Because there was two candidates that we was worried of. Mr. Kelly from Arizona and Shapiro from Pennsylvania. They didn't pick Shapiro for some reason. <laughs> we know the reason. <laughs> I'm not going to say what race, what people, you know, I can't say that. <laughs> but Mr. Shapiro was a stronger case. He had 20 electoral votes from Pennsylvania. He was strong. He was younger. He um, had a 63% approval rating at the, as a governor. So he had a good run. He also is undefeated when he runs for office. So he never lost. Whenever he ran, he never lost. Strong candidate. But Miss Harris went the other way. Miss Harris wants to go and get Minnesota votes. Despite Governor Walz on the ticket, some Minnesota Democrats might take some convincing. Minnesota's home to the largest number of uncommitted delegates heading into the Democratic National Convention in a few weeks. Eleven of the state's 75 delegates chose not to support President Joe Biden back on Super Tuesday. Now, Minnesota has a big Muslim problem over there. The Somalians over there, the ones that was un, uncommitted voters, there was over 100,000 uncommitted voters in Minnesota. So, Harris Bright Idea believed that she could appease to those folks instead of appeasing the folks of Shapiro, 20 electoral votes that you could flip. Nice, nice and play now. Or go back and appease these folks here who is still not on board with you. Michigan Democratic primary sent alarm bells ringing within the Democratic Party after a large contingent voted uncommitted against Joe Biden, with more than 100,000 casting those protest votes as frustrations on the far left, particularly with the Israel-Gaza war gains team. And joining us now for more is Jelani Hussein, co-chair of the group Uncommitted Vote Minnesota. Thank you so much for joining us. How do you see the protest vote against President Biden playing a role in the Super Tuesday primaries, and, and what impact do you hope it will have overall on the uh, election landscape. Well, thank you for having me. You know, 80% of Democrats are reported to support a ceasefire now, and President Biden has continuously ignored his party, his constituents, and uh, most Americans and, and the world in really calling to end this genocide. And so in Minnesota and across other states on Super Tuesday, uh, we are uh, joining, just like in Michigan, uh, the uncommitted vote, which is a really a strong protest vote that President Biden needs to listen to his constituents. Now we have Ms. Harris here in her first rally with her VP, and already the pro Hamas folks are coming for her.
Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. There she goes. There she goes. Sit down. Shut up. Let me talk. <laughs> okay. Now, see, Trump could get away with that. Kamala, you do that one or two more times, they're going to come after you. Vice President Kamala Harris just handled protesters in Michigan like a ball. I think he can't have even worse takes. Don Lemon always surprises me how much worse it can get. Because in that clip, I didn't see someone who was in boss mode. I saw someone who was in prosecutor mode. The kind of mode you go into just says like, I'll lock you up because I don't want to hear what you have to say. And that is not the moment that she needs to be having right now, but it seems to be the mode that she wants to go into. We just came off of a rally in Pennsylvania where they were talking about how we need to get away from divisiveness. Walls continue to talk about joy. And as someone whose entire work is rooted in taking a joy-based approach to transformational change, Joy is rooted in community. It is community centered. And part of community is making room to have difficult conversations. And so what I see is not someone being a boss shutting people down. It's someone who's scared that they do not have the ability to have a tough conversation. And a conversation that needs to be had way before we enter November and go to the polls. And that is a conversation that so many of us doing activist work around Palestine are trying to make sure is going to happen so we can clarify things. So instead of being on TikTok, an app that they want to ban, making all these videos to trending sounds, brats, coconuts, all the works, I need you to sit down and actually be based in community actually hear people out instead of saying i'm talking say i hear you i see you we need to talk about this right now you don't have the support of the pro hamas folks now they're in kind of a limbo either you don't stay home or they're gonna vote for kamala uh regret regretfully vote for kamala they're not gonna vote for trump but they already saw you got weaknesses you think this is some sort of cool, epic clapback moment? I don't even know what to say to you. This is just a disgusting and bad faith response to people protesting a genocide. A genocide which is being enabled not by Donald Trump, but by the government that Kamala Harris represents. The crowd was cheering for like a minute, by the way. It's just depressing. Donald Trump is horrible, but please don't allow yourself to be brainwashed by memes and PR. Kamala Harris is a war criminal and a pretty fucking condescending one of that. Now we have CNN, Abby Phillips. She's talking about Minnesota's uncommitted voters, and it's going to be a problem. And I think ultimately, Shapiro, I think fit is important. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I also think that when you look at the principle of do no harm, maybe they did say, in a state like Minnesota, uh, do we want to... Those 100,000 uncommitted voters who came out about the Gaza uh, war, do we want to antagonize those voters? Those are all parts of part of the questions as well. So can, but can I just say, uh, Tim Walz also spoke conciliatorily towards those people. He said, look, that uncommitted vote is significant and those people should be heard. So having that kind of response, I think, is probably more of an open door to the parts of the party that have been very frustrated with the Democrats. So, but just to, just to one point on the, on the, on the Gaza war, Shapiro has the same position on Israel that Governor Walls, that, that Senator Kelly has. He's actually been more critical of Netanyahu than the other two, but he is Jewish. And He's also the face of the crackdown on the protests, right? He spoke very vehemently about those campus protests as being anti-Semitic. Not all of them. The ones that were anti-Semitic he okay, criticized as being anti-Semitic. He was out front on the issue. So I'm wondering if that's the kind of thing that, again, for the activist wing of the party, sure, absolutely. they thought was a slap in the face. A yeah. uh, slap in the face to the activists. Mm-hmm. Now... There's a big problem in the Democrat Party. There's about 20, 25% of the party hates the Jews. Now, it's funny. When Trump came into office, uh, we had a little kerfuffle in Charleston, Virginia. And these folks came out chanting. And 
the media was so quick to put that around Donald Trump's neck and his supporters. Let's remember the fact that a woman, a, a counter-protester, was murdered there in Charlottesville. We've had uh, no reports of anything like that happening on any college campus to date in these pro-Palestinian protests. He said the hate in Charlottesville uh, paled in comparison to the hate we're seeing there. Again, a matter of opinion, but let's remember there was neo-Nazi and other white nationalist hate in Charlottesville. So remember those points. Now, fast forward, we have people at Washington, D.C. defacing of statues and monuments, pro Hamas folks rioting. This is in DC. They caused more havoc in DC than the so called January 6th insurrection. And nobody's saying nothing about it. It's a big problem. And even uh, Mr. Crying Van Jones, even he had to say something about it. Listen, that, that the, the conservatives, the right wing, the Republicans, they were chewing their fingernails down to the knuckle because they were afraid of a Josh Shapiro. They were afraid of a Mark Kelly. They're not as afraid of this uh, new governor because they think they can define him. Uh, and I, but so he, here's the challenge you've got in this party. Uh, and you know, people don't want to talk about it. We got to talk about it. On the one hand, you have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen by the Biden administration. Uh, you start, start hearing that genocide joke, that was building, that was building. And so those folks needed to have a, a candidate that they could feel comfortable with. This helps them in that regard. But you also have anti-Semitism that has gotten marbled into this party. You can be you know, for uh, the Palestinians without being an anti-Jewish bigot, but there are some anti-Jewish bigots out there. And there's some disquiet now, and there has to be, how much of what just happened is caving into some of these darker parts in the party. So that's going to have to get worked out. It's going to have to be, get talked through. Anti-Jewish bigots marvel the Democrat Party. Now, I didn't say it. Mr. Klein Van Jones said it, okay? If you're a Democrat, if you're a folk, this is your problem now. This is your problem. Because no many, how many times you try to appease them or accommodate them, they still going to come after you. What is this nonsense? And the very long pause after that, like, ooh, yes, I did that. I said that. I'm voting Kamala because I care about my rights. Isn't one of your rights um, the right to protest? The same protest that these people were doing? The same protesters she just shushed with a one-liner trying to be it? That's the rights she's going to protect? You sure? You're going to push Kamala more to left once she's been elected? While she's doing this? Before she's been elected? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Every day, every day I get on this app and I'm more baffled by stupidity. <sighs> anyway, that's my thoughts for today. If you guys got any value of my content, do me a favor, hit the like, hit that subscribe. You said notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you weirdos, get your ass off my lawn.